on the Hawkeye Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. This is the Fight for Iowa podcast, brought to you by Athletico Physical Therapy, Atlantic Coca-Cola Bottling Company, Buffalo Wild Wings, Iowa's Corn Farmers, Quick Star, Green State Credit Union, and by Extreme from Mediacom. This is the Fight for Iowa podcast. Here's the voice of the Hawkeyes, Gary Dolphin. Both men's and women's college basketball teams have returned to organized weight training, conditioning, and skills instruction with coaches, supervised up to eight hours per week between now and the start of school. Iowa basketball coach Fran McCaffrey is with us for an update, and we'll hear from the coach in just a minute on Fight for Iowa. More Fight for Iowa after this. Despite living in uncertain times, Iowa's corn farmers remain optimistic that their now-planted crop will grow to feed livestock, fuel your vehicle with ethanol, and be part of over 4,000 products that you use every day. The Iowa corn farmer plays a vital role in our state, and we are proud to call Iowa home. You might think Iowa grows corn, but the truth is, corn grows Iowa. Athletico Physical Therapy remains open to safely provide physical and occupational therapy treatment options in clinic and online during COVID-19. Delaying treatment could mean additional expenses and prolonged pain. Visit athletico.com. Request an appointment in clinic or virtually through a secure online video chat via FaceTime or Zoom and start feeling better today. Now back to the Fight for Iowa podcast. Here's the voice of the Hawkeyes, Gary Dolphin. Up to now, it's been a lot of Zoom meetings, lifting and shooting by the basketball players on their own. Coach McCaffrey and staff are excited to get back in front of the team and watch them in person. Yeah, Dolph, uh, you know, we had, we just completed actually our second workout with the group. Uh, We had our first on Monday and our second today. Uh, We do a mixture of team workouts, and skill development sessions. And then uh, Coach Maxwell takes them in the weight room uh, four days a week. And that completes our eight hours of a lot of time that's given to us by the NCAA. So uh, it's just, you know, we haven't been together, as you all know, since we were in Indianapolis. And so we're thrilled to get out there. Uh, In the beginning, it's always kind of we go through things with the veteran guys show the young guys how to do it and have them do it. And it's always sort of part to whole. So you break it down and you put it back together. Two on two, three on three, so forth, then five on five. Very positive, you know, relaxed atmosphere of teaching and coaching. And we'll do a little bit of scrimmaging. And then the players have a lot of time in the facility to come in and shoot on their own if they want to. Uh, they have various times in this building, and then it shuts down about 5.30, and they clean it for the next day. Uh, very strict protocols. And, you know, we, we've been really fortunate that none of our, none of our guys have gotten the virus. Uh, you know, we're encouraging them to, off the floor, you know, be diligent and try to stay within their groups, wear a mask, those kinds of things. Uh, but they uh, had two really good workouts at this week. Uh, we we're very impressed, and, and you would have expected it from our veteran guys. You know, Luca's out there uh, leading, Connor's leading, and Joe Wieskamp, uh, he looks terrific. Uh, CJ, you know, of course, had the surgery last week, so uh, he's here, but he's you're not participating. Uh, uh, Bohannon played the first day, uh, he didn't practice today, a little issue with his foot, but it's nothing major. It's great to have Patrick back out there. Uh, Jack Nungy is uh, working on the side. He's not a full go yet, but he looks really good physically. And Joe Toussaint has uh, really been explosive and playing like a veteran, even though he's only a sophomore. So, I mean, I really like our, our mixture of veteran guys. And then you, you, you factor in the young players. Uh, really smart. I mean, Aaron Eulis, Tony Perkins, and Chris and Keegan Murray. I mean, those guys, they've jumped right in. Uh, they have been here for quite some time doing the lifting and the open gym and the shooting. 
but, you know, to be out there now going through the break, going through the motion offense, shell drill defensively, things like that, you know, I think it's important for them, but it's also, I think, welcome by them to kind of get out with their teammates and, and start to learn. Sometimes, Dolph, you've got different terminology that maybe their high school coach used on how we're going to close out or how we're going to defend a ball screen, how we're going to defend a down screen, how we're going to defend a straight cut. I mean, those kinds of things. And we just sort of methodically go through it. And, uh, and obviously, at the same time, encouraging an up-tempo philosophy. Uh, they already know that. That's one of the reasons why they came here. They want to play fast. And then, but then you, you sort of teach it and then put it to use and they kind of see how it works and they figure it out. So it's been great. And, uh, you know, we're just excited to be together. That's the most important thing. You, you just jogged through a deep and talented roster, which you, you could foresee coming back this year. And you, you mentioned the five gifted recruits on board. Now you've dealt with this issue before in terms of minutes played and who ultimately red shirts. Uh, so my question is collectively, what, what excites you about these incoming freshmen as a group? I think a couple things, Dolph. Uh, number one is versatility. Uh, they, they can all play more than one position. Uh, we have length and athleticism. Uh, all, all the four guys that are here can score. I did, I did not mention Josh Gundelay because we're still working on the paperwork to get him from London to the United States, to Iowa City. Uh, we're making progress there. Uh, but he fits that group as well. He's, he, you know, he's a bigger guy, obviously, at seven feet tall, but big and strong and physical. He's also versatile. He can, he can face the basket. And he can play with his back to the basket. We just want to get him here and get him training with our guys. But the four guys that are here right now, serious, concentrated, listen. Uh, you look for certain things, Dolph, when you first start with young guys is do you have to continually repeat yourself? You have to tell them something, tell them again, tell them again, tell them again. Well, that's obviously a problem. And these guys, you make a teaching point, got it, coach. And, and then you move on, and then we improve. And, and that's what I think has been most impressive about this group. More Fight for Iowa after this. The dining rooms in all Buffalo Wild Wings in Iowa are now open. To ensure your safety, all high touch point areas will be cleaned with increased frequency. Tables have been repositioned to allow for a minimum of six feet of separation. And all menus, cutlery, and cups are now single use. We look forward to seeing you back at Buffalo Wild Wings soon. We're brought to you today by Green State Credit Union. Green State Credit Union is with you during these times of uncertainty. Membership is open to all Iowans, so visit greenstate.org, greenstate.org, and learn more about ways we can be of service to you. Green State Credit Union, a proud supporter of the Iowa Hawkeyes. Now back to the Fight for Iowa podcast. Here's the voice of the Hawkeyes, Gary Dolphin. Coach, uh, the mystery surrounding Luca Garza's return or departure to professional basketball should be solved uh, here in the next uh, few days, few weeks. Uh, what's the latest from your perspective? What have you covered with Luca in your conversations? I think what we all recognize is the important process that Luca has to go through right now with his family. Uh, myself and any member of the coaching staff is available for any help that he might need. Uh, he has an insurance policy in place should he come back. That was, I think, one of the things that we could take care of for him, and we did. Uh, and we want to know that we want him protected. And then you, know, you have to give him the, the freedom to go and have conversations and see what's out there, see what his market is. You know, and, and he has offers on the table, and, and he's – you know, he's weighing those versus coming back and the advantages of a lot of different things. It's not an easy decision for a young guy, but fortunately for him, he's got an incredibly supportive family and an incredibly supportive group of teammates and coaches. So we're all helping him. Uh, we're not pressuring him. Uh, I think the good thing that happened, Dolph, was they moved the date back. 
I think that helped relax him and the other kids that are going through the same thing. And uh, it gives them more opportunities to have conversations with NBA teams, general managers, and so forth. And then you always want the guys that you love, and I, and I love this kid, is to be able to make a decision with all of the information available. You, know, you want them to make an informed decision. Uh, as a parent, as a coach, that's all you want for him. And you make it and you don't look back. And that's what he's going to do. And, uh, you know, the deadline is August 3rd. They've been, there, have been, there has been talk about moving that date back because, of course, the NBA draft is now October 15th. It's usually the last week of June. So, obviously, this is a goofy year with dates, and we're going to continue to be moving stuff. Uh, but I just want him to be able to have had enough time to have the conversations that he needs to make the best and most well-informed decision. And he has our full support. Iowa basketball coach Fran McCaffrey, our special guest this week on Fight for Iowa. Fran, the last thing I have is, you know, usually April, June, July are reserved for AAU tournaments and other scouting events. Uh, last I heard, those were rescheduled for August. And then in September, uh, off-campus in-person recruiting would be allowed. Is that calendar still in place? No, uh, August is, is, is dead. Uh, I think we're going to be able to get back out in September. The interesting thing, Dolph, is while it's dead for us, which means we can't go, the tournaments are still still being held. So a lot of the guys who are recruiting are still playing. Okay. Now, it also depends on where you live. So there are fewer tournaments in some places than others. But there's, quite frankly, been a number of them in the Midwest uh, in recent weeks. So we just stay in touch with our guys. We're able to watch some of those games on live stream. You know, we, we pull them off and then we watch them later. Uh, and we just stay in touch with our guys. What you're seeing is a little bit of a shift in recruiting behavior. A number of guys have committed to institutions that they've never even visited. Mm. Uh, and that, I get it, but I think you run the risk of, rampant transferring down the down the road uh but you know I, I don't know what the answer is it's not like there's a perfect answer it's not like I could, I, I could say to a recruit you need to do this uh the comfortability factor i think is always something that makes the ultimate decision feel really good in the heart of any young man that's making a decision to go to your particular school and you hope that they have the opportunity to experience that. But this year has been crazy. <laughs> and it's, it's just not happening that way. Uh, fortunately, you know, we've had some longer relationships with some guys uh, that we really like that have been here. Some were developing relationships where they haven't been here. And, uh, you know, as much as we want them to say yes and, and say, okay, we're, we're done with the 21 class. Uh, we got who we wanted. You know, I get it. They, uh, they want to do two things, put their feet on the campus and then also kind of have the experience. You know, you sort of dream that one day you're going to be recruited and have a typical recruiting experience where you're out, you're playing with your team and you're being evaluated and you're either playing well or not playing as well. And it, kind of sorts itself out but you get phone calls you have conversations and you develop relationships with the coaches that you'll ultimately play for and then also with the players that are at that particular institution that you'll ultimately play with so uh you know we're trying to do the best we can to be diligent and to push but not to push too hard uh because we have to i think be cognizant of what these young people are going through and allow them a little bit of, of leeway. Well said, Hawkeye basketball coach Fran McCaffrey. Hey, I look forward to putting my feet back on campus and having a face-to-face -face interview with Fran McCaffrey again. Uh, that would be great, Tom. <laughs> this, and then go on the iClub circuit and go somewhere else yeah. and hang out together. Yes. <laughs> that's, that's great. Uh, coach, as always, uh, wonderful getting caught up with you, and, and we look forward to uh, watching practice and uh, being among the guys here in the next few weeks, okay? 
Look forward to it, Dolph. Thanks so much. That's Iowa basketball coach Fran McCaffrey, and we're back to wrap things up in just a minute. More Fight for Iowa after this. Fight for Iowa is brought to you by Quickstar. Quickstar is committed to serving our communities and ensuring access to all essentials during these challenging times. They'll continue to provide fresh milk, bread, eggs, butter, and more, as well as your hot food favorites, including pizza. Quickstar's got you covered when you want to get in and out quickly and safely back home. Thank you, Quickstar. Today, your internet connection is more important than ever. Extreme, powered by Mediacom, has the speed you need with 99.9% network reliability. Atlantic Coca-Cola Bottling Company is proud to support the local communities in which we live, work, and play. Every day, Atlantic Coca-Cola Bottling Trucks continue to help the food and beverage supply chain by delivering products to retail outlets and those restaurants providing carryout and delivery services. We know Iowans are resilient, and together we are stronger. Now back to the Fight for Iowa podcast. Here's the voice of the Hawkeyes, Gary Dolphin. That is this week's Fight for Iowa podcast. A sincere thank you to all of our wonderful sponsors. And thanks to Iowa basketball coach Fran McCaffrey. We'll talk more hoops uh, next week, and we will hear from Iowa football coach Kirk Ferentz. Until then, I'm Gary Dolphin. Thanks so much for listening.